So I'm going to take about the next 25 minutes to give you a quick kind of run through of uh, the various uh, software tools that the Sim Center has been developing. Um, and then later on in the breakout groups, folks will have uh, more opportunity to, to talk about specific tools related to the different hazards. Um, First, just as a matter of kind of context for the, for the SIM Center, it's, it's part of NERI, the Natural Hazards Engineering Research Infrastructure, which I think as most people know, uh, the bulk of uh, NERI is the seven experimental sites and two kind of reconnaissance facilities that NSF supports. Um, there's also the folks at DesignSafe down at University of Texas uh, that house kind of both the data depot and high performance computing. And then the SIM Center's role here is to kind of developed cloud-enabled research uh, software simulation applications that really tap into and take advantage of high performance computing. And, and it's, you know, and then the entrance to this is kind of a um, combination of through design safe with the Sim Center tool, primarily to researchers, but also researchers in industry and government agencies, as well as kind of academics. Uh, and everything that the Sim Center has produced is available through the Sim Center portal. So if you have if you've been there, but uh, kind of Google that and you'll see that includes kind of the software and documentation links to some of the software that I'm going to show ways to download it. The software source code itself is up on GitHub and there's links to that as well. You know, education and training webinars that go hand in hand with the, the simulation software. And then we have a, a forum there, which is a great way to interact on specific tools, you know, if you have questions to kind of um, contact some of Sim Center personnel, but also other researchers who are using it, so, so the forum. Um, so I'd like to begin by just outlining the, the computational framework that we use for the simulations. And those that are familiar with the uh, research in peer and earthquake engineering before following a performance engineering framework, which can be carried over to other hazards, but it's looking very deliberately at kind of characterizing facilities, buildings, bridges, other infrastructure, the different hazard ways we characterize that, then simulating in detail the responsive structures and soils and so forth, looking at damage, taking that through to loss and then to decision making. So this very sort of modular framework, thinking carefully about how data flows from one component to the next component. And of course, characterizing the uncertainties that, that propagate throughout from um, each stage of the analyses. So the, the way that the Sim Center has kind of mapped that into the software environment is represented by these puzzle pieces. And it's really recognizing that it's, we have a broad mandate to look at many hazards and to look at the full from kind of the inventory through to uh, uh, performance and damage and loss assessment. So really working on kind of encapsulating software that exists out there, software modules with kind of pre and post processors and being able to stitch them together to again, go from characterizing uh, an asset and the hazard through to simulating response, uh, performance assessment. And I think importantly for looking at uh, issues of kind of resilience is then also starting to look at, at the implications of the damage on um, socioeconomic factors and recovery. And the key thing is to have this all in kind of an open source environment where the modules one can plug and play with, with different modules, with different levels of fidelity. Now, from those puzzle pieces, the way it's sort of mapped out here is in this kind of center layer that I just highlighted with the red box, various software components. We call these kind of our backend research tools that one can tap into. Again, these are programmed open source um, software available through GitHub. Um, these tie into, on so on the bottom of this slide, various software modules that may be out there. For example, OpenSeas on kind of computational, kind of finite element type simulation, but also data sets of ground motions, uh, wind fields, and so forth. Um, but then on top of these various software components, we've created some desktop applications, and I'll talk about these specifically, but these are things that can be downloaded to your desktop that really build on these different software components and from your desktop can either run locally on your machine or tap into high performance computing facilities. Um, so th this things that I showed on the last slide are really encapsulated in the center green box that, that you see here, the different components and these desktop applications. But this is showing how they connect into the broader uh, infrastructure on the right side, uh, the Texas Advanced Computing for Center, which again, that design safe has the uh, data depot there, but also high performance computing facilities. 
you know, on the left side here, tying out into outside databases could be on inventories, wind fields, ground motions, and so forth, but really allowing kind of users to interact with this and then to run software locally on their own computers or for more computationally ones to tap into the high performance computing facility at DesignSafe. So now walk through um, a few of the components to the, uh, and then later look at the applications uh, that I mentioned. Just a, a few of the components and some highlights. Um, so if we think about kind of characterizing the, the hazard and thinking specifically about earthquake, uh, we have kind of features built into this workflow that tap into uh, uh, OpenSHA, seismic hazard analysis from USGS, also into OpenQuake from the GEM Foundation, kind of to characterize earthquake hazard at various locations in the US and around the world, but then being able to uh, represent ground motions through a stochastic simulator or to pull out uh, into various databases, the peer ground motion database to pull in ground motions, also to pull in ground motions, uh, databases of uh, simulated ground motion, say from the SCEC center. Um, another way to think about pulling in kind of the ground motion and the hazard effect is with direct simulation, so-called physics-based earthquakes. And so we've done a test bed, for example, using the, the simulations done from the Lawrence Livermore lab, but one can imagine from the M9 project and other to pull those directly into say regional simulations. Um, similarly, looking at the, uh, the wind and storm surge hazard to, to be able to kind of tap into various scenarios. And here we've been um, kind of collecting various simplified and surrogate models that are out there, say to represent for a given uh, hurricane track what the wind field would be, and also, uh, for example, the folks at Notre Dame have worked on a project, New Jersey Coast, with um, surrogate models to simulate storm surge. And there's other efforts uh, being kind of pulling in those kind of surrogate models to simulate storm surge, so to tap into those. And I think looking for the future to be able to pull into databases from programs like AdCERC, so it's called physics-based simulation to kind of characterize the things like storm surge. Um, another component of what we've been focusing on is the describing the assets, both articulating kind of an ontology and metadata, if you will, how you describe assets, but also developing some AI tools to help identify features that are important. So in particular, image recognition to say for the hurricane problems, pulling out features of roofs, windows, first four elevations, things that we can infer using AI tools from images. Uh, another AI tool is, uh, is called SURF, and this is to... Uh, um, spatial uncertainty research framework, and that's to kind of infer when there's gaps in various databases from surrounding neighborhood to infer the gaps. So you could get a kind of a high resolution database, i.e., you know, every building or parcel, but fill in gaps with it with some of these uh, statistical tools. Uh, another component that we've, uh, that is kind of key to what we're doing is kind of the, the estimating the damage to facilities. And here, this is a library we call Pelican for probabilistic estimation of losses and, and damage. Um, and it's a multi-fidelity framework. And as shown by the boxes on, on the left, on the one time, uh, kind of at, at the more empirical level, we're pulling in kind of hazardous type fragility functions. In fact, fragility functions from hazardous and other ones that are being developed uh, to kind of characterize uh, the, the damage that occurs under, say, earthquake, wind, storm surge type effects, but also allowing for more detailed simulation, say those familiar on the earthquake side with FEMA P58, that is a detailed component by component representation of damage. So to have a toolbox there where we could, or a library, where we could pull in these sort of different functions and information and make use of it in the simulations. So next I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the workflow applications that build on top of the components. Um, kind of working from the upper left going downwards here, one called QuoFem that I'll talk about, which is kind of uh, characterizing uncertainty in finite element, type, finite element type simulations. And then this can feed into three modules that I'll talk about where we integrate information on the hazards for earthquake winds and, and hydrodynamic forces, storm surge and tsunami. Um, next would be taking information from simulations into performance-based tool to characterize damage and losses. And finally, the last, the last tool, R2D, is really building that into uh, regional simulations. These first, uh, the other modules that I spoke about here are really geared towards 
individual facilities, but then building those into the R2D for looking at large inventories of facilities. So looking a little bit more detail on, on each one of these, first the COFAM tool. And then again, you could think of this as kind of one that, that couples some sort of a finite element engine. And a few of them are listed there, say OpenSeas, FEEP. You could even have a, a surrogate model generator, uh, various types, um, together with UQ tools, that is different sort of algorithms for, for um, Monte Carlo sampling, for doing uh, um, optimization kind of surrogate or parameter identification. And then shown down the middle here is the type of problems that one can address from you know, propagating uncertainties forward. If you have experimental data and you wanna use optimization to characterize the parameters you know, based on experimental data. And I think going forward also tools for developing surrogate models, kind of these simplified models that can be built into you know, then regional simulations. And the, the uncertainty algorithms, a number of them we pulled from uh, or coupled to the program Dakota out of the national lab, but also working with other researchers who have toolboxes of different sorts of algorithms. So coupling these in through QuoFem, making them available. Uh, the next are the three applications that kind of take the, the finite element, the uncertainty modeling and couple it with the hazard. So this uh, EEUQ, earthquake engineering UQ, is really taking those kind of finite element models of buildings, or it could be soil columns, and coupling it with tools to pull in representations of ground motion. So stochastic ground motion simulators, um, tying it into um, kind of PSHA type calculations to get say uh, um, conditional spectra, and then to select and scale ground motions to that, um, and also being able to propagate ground motions up through soil columns. So that's in the EEUQ. When we look at the WE EUQ, wind engineering UQ, um, here again, we're kind of taking um, structural building type models and coupling it with representations of wind fields. These wind fields could be, there's a stochastic uh, wind load generator, also a number of databases of, of information from say wind tunnels on, on kind of standard size uh, building configurations, but also coupling it into with computational fluid dynamic simulations, say with the program, We've been focusing on using open foam. And a key component of the uh, WE EUQ suite is the, the inflow calculator tool or module called TIMF, which is characterizing the turbulent inflow flow, which one needs to, to generate the input for the CFD simulations of, of wind effects. Um, similar to WE EUQ, Hydro EUQ is doing some of the same thing, but looking at the hydrodynamic fluid forces here. And again, here we're kind of focusing on doing CFD modeling with open foam. And one of the initiatives we've been working on here is together with the folks at the uh, Oregon State at the, at the uh, wave flume is to kind of think about a digital twin model. So to, to um, kind of characterize the, the boundary conditions and so forth and the flow conditions in the uh, flume such that researchers can kind of make use of this tool to kind of do um, simulations as a counterpart to their physical experiments. Okay, so those were the three modules that kind of characterize the, the response of, facility, of buildings or other facilities under the you know, earthquake, uh, wind, and, and fluid flow. The next on, on the chain is the PBE tool. So this really integrates that Pelican toolbox I mentioned for damage and losses together with these finite element simulations. The current version of this is really building on the, the prior work uh, in earthquake engineering. So it's kind of coupling um, models of buildings underground shaking, looking at damage, but then the future building this out and the tools are already, or the models are already in Pelican for other types of say wind damage or storm surge damage to be able to build that into this tool here. So again, it's being able to conveniently do multiple analyses of a structure characterizing from its response going into damage and losses. And finally, pulling the things together is looking at the R2D tool, looking at regional simulations. So this is a tool, the, the interface for this is using QGIS. So one could see a graphic representation of a large inventory of facilities. And it's basically taking those software modules I described from characterizing the, the assets, the inventory of building or other assets, the kind of hazard effects from uh, earthquake, wind and, and fluid flow, storm surge or tsunami, and looking at the damage to those facilities. 
And this is kind of built in a very, all of the tools here in a very open source. So the idea is that researchers can plug and play different components, um, you know, from how they characterize the, the hazard to how they get the response to the damage of the structure into these uh, simulation. And then also to take the data from R2D and look downstream at the socioeconomic effects and the, the implications for recovery. And finally, the last thing I'd like to mention is some regional testbed applications we've done. These are ones that use the R2D tool to look at regional simulations. And we've, we've done two earthquake simulations. We've done a, a large um, testbed of the San Francisco Bay Area that has, uh, I think it's the 1.8 million buildings represented there and doing simulations and loss studies. We've also done kind of a hindcast for the uh, earthquake that was in Anchorage in 2018. And I think uh, we've done another hindcast in the hurricane arena for the uh, Hurricane Laura that affected Lake Charles. I mentioned those, those hindcasts are interesting to, to imagine using a tool R2D to spin it up quickly after an event. And it could be kind of coupled with field reconnaissance to kind of make simulations ahead of field of, of uh, researchers going out in the field and then to pull in data as they're using them. So those are those hindcasts and the two forward casts, one in the San Francisco Bay Area and another one looking at the Atlantic City coast region under hurricane and storm surge. And these test beds are really, one, it's a, a proof of concept and it's a way we use to, to test and verify our workflow and in, and in the process to engage interested researchers who have different modules and to pull them into these uh, workflows you know, and identify kind of research gaps and opportunities. But, but I think that the test beds themselves are also indicated as a model for what we hope that will develop a culture in the community of more data sharing. That, that is when one invests the time and effort to create a large regional simulation by posting that on design safe. And we've most recently, the hurricane Laura, uh, the, the hurricane test bed that's shown here is the first one out of the box that we formally published on Design Safe, so all the data is up there. And the vision is that other researchers can take that test bed, um, the regional simulation, and adapt it to their own uses and kind of share and augment the data from that or the simulation results so that we're not just uh, kind of producing the, the software to run these simulations, but really promoting by kind of organizing the data structure, um, promoting a culture of really data sharing. And one last slide coming back to our kind of puzzle pieces here. Again, the whole idea is we want this as modular as possible. And also to go beyond just kind of simulating, um, you know, statically say an area like, like, like the Bay Area. So to look at problems of kind of urban planning, looking to the future. So one can imagine that on the left side of these puzzle pieces, when you're describing the, asset, in the, the assets, the inventory of buildings or the road networks, to look at urban planning and growth, to imagine um, those inventories growing in the future and how policy interventions can affect the, you know, say retrofit for, for storm or for uh, earthquake, how that can affect the, the features of, of buildings and bridges in the inventory, lifeline infrastructure. And then going all the way across this, there could be, there's obviously lots of room for improving the characterization of hazards, how we simulate the, the structural response and damage. And then finally, going to the right side, when we estimate these damage and losses, really to tie those into um, other software or at least into research groups who are looking at the outcome from these regional things to look at socioeconomic implications, the implications on recovery, and also going beyond uh, kind, of, kind of socioeconomic to look at environment ecological impacts. But the idea is to have this open source framework as really a, a number of tools that researchers can, can adapt in different ways to their, to their research interests and needs. Okay, well, uh, I read, that's a lot of information to go through. I think in a, in a few minutes, we'll have a uh, little time for Q&A and maybe folks can uh, query the working group leaders when we get to the breakout sessions uh, a little bit later this morning.